Sean Wykong is a poet and his first collection, Sik Van Glashku, is published by Verve Poetry Press in April. Sean is giving a preview of this work, which explores food, identity and migration. Sean has previously published poetry pamphlets with speculative books called How to Cook and Be Happy, and he won the Rialto Open Pamphlet Competition with You Are Mistaken. You can find out more about Sean's work at seanwaikung.carrd.co. Hey everyone, I'm Sean Waikung. Um, I've got a book coming out on uh, April 15th with Verve Poetry Press. It's called Sifan Glasgow. Um, and I'm going to read some poems for you from that book. It's very much inspired by the city of Glasgow, especially the south side. Um, and there'll be a link somewhere around here that you can pre-order it. And basically I've written a lot about food in it, um, to explain the title a wee bit. Sifan is uh, how you say food is ready in um, a lot of Chinese families. So growing up, I would always hear whenever, like 6, 6 p.m. ish, whenever food was ready, I'd always hear Sifan, and then I'd know that my food is ready. And then Glasgow obviously is the Gaelic term for the city of Glasgow. And so what I've done is I've um, been inspired, allowed myself to be inspired by various restaurants and cafes um, that I've attended and eaten at and drank at um, throughout Glasgow. Some of these have inspired me sort of in terms of writing directly about my experience of being there. Others are sort of a less solid kind of um, direct comparison, you know, it's sort of inspired by the name or the food or the story behind the restaurant itself. Um, and so, yeah, I thought for the Southside Fringe, I would read some um, some of the ones that were about Southside venues. Um, but to start off with, I'm going to just sort of uh, read out the first poem in the collection, which is actually called Chinatown. Chinatown. This place was built by migrants. Therefore, it's ours. They came from the Gaeltacht. They came from the Gaeltacht. Sometimes I wonder what Meg Gungung would have thought had he been given the chance to visit here. He had lived in other cities built by migrants, Hong Kong, Liverpool, Bradford. I like to think that if he had been given the chance, he would have liked it here, but who can know for sure? When he first arrived in the UK, I don't know what Glasgow would have been like. The Chinatown here opened in 1992, the year after I was born. I moved here three years after he died. This place was built by migrants. We have been eating here ever since. This poem's called Ramshack. I still don't fully know what brought me here to Glasgow, I mean. I just felt some kind of magnetic pull, almost as if I had no choice. In a good way, for instance, I still remember the first time we both came here to Southside, I mean, which both of us had previously been warned about from people we had met who had moved away from here. Yet, when we walked through Southside, I mean, down Vicky Road, past the world food shops, and through the parks and tenement lined roads, and by the train stations, and through Shorelands and Pollock Shields, and further along, we both agreed that we felt something good here. It seemed like a decent part of town. And we went to the Glad Cafe and ordered a coffee and talked to someone who recommended that we give the Rum Shack a try. And when we did give it a try, the Rum Shack, I mean, we both agreed that our futures here seemed bright. And now it's years later and I still live here, but you don't. And the Glad got redecorated and Vicky Road redeveloped, but the tenements still stand. And so does the Rum Shack. And I still don't know why I came here, but here I am and I am mostly happy here. And I hope that wherever you are now, you are mostly happy too. So some of the poems in the collection uh, deal quite 
directly with um, the whole COVID mess that we're in. Others don't. This one's called a ring. Yeah, this one's called a wing rush. The sound of helicopters above becomes overwhelmingly present in the street as I walk down towards the park. My allocated one outside walk per day, but I start to think. What if they know my secret? That I was out in the communal garden behind my tenement earlier. I mean, all I did was sit there between the bins thinking about food or something else non-essential. But does that still count as going out? What if the helicopter is filled with officials with telescopes monitoring how often people go out? What if people are no longer allowed in the communal gardens behind their tenements? What if it's some new government thing I haven't heard about? Something declared during the time it took me from leaving my front door to this street here. So devoid of people but still littered with polystyrene containers almost as if that was all that was left of us. Yad go. One. Choose the window seat in the corner because that way you can always keep track of everything else that's happening in the room, just in case. Two. Wonder if it's a table service place or go to the counter place. Three. One of you orders the veg, the other orders the meat. Four. A few blocks away, people are threatened with eviction from their tenements because they don't have electricity and aren't safe to live in, but where else will they go? Five. Talk about your new projects, even if the other doesn't ask, but still remember that this is all fine. Six. Don't fuck this up, Sean. Seven. Rice or bread or both or none, make the choice. Eight. Wonder how to spell Yadgar correctly. Nine. Monitor what other people eat as well to see what looks good for next time. Ten. Listen to shouting in another language from behind the door but remain calm as it's not angry shouting, just normal shouting. Eleven. Don't mention the burn marks stinging on either of your chests. 12. Discuss the flavour profile and the feelings and memories that each dish invokes. 13. Accidentally order some kind of writer, thinking it's a sweet, then laugh at the mistake while also feeling guilty for not already knowing what things are. 14. Walk back part of the way together. 15. Tell each other what a great night it's been. 16. Hug. 17. That's it. <clears throat> Tinto Tapas. Sometimes I have thoughts like, I wish I knew more about Spanish food. And then I wonder if thinking like that is culturally insensitive, especially since I'm always telling people that Chinese food doesn't really exist as a thing in the same way that British food doesn't really exist as a thing. And maybe that's the same with Spanish food. In fact, I know it probably is, yet somehow my brain is still stuck thinking in that way, as if things should always be so easily defined. Like, yes, okay, so British food consists of lots of different cuisines, but at the same time, if you say a Sunday roast, most people would know that you meant a British Sunday roast. In the same way that if you said fan, most people would know that you meant Chinese fan. But anyway, all I'm saying is I've never eaten Spanish food that I haven't liked, and I'm sorry that I don't know more about it. Not all the um, the poems in the collection are about food and restaurants. Uh, there's a few that um, were just written about my family and my life and all that good stuff. So this is a poem that was inspired by uh, not food so much as um, some drawings that I received from my gungu, my grandfather, after he died. Uh, and this is called... Where is the tree that my gung gung drew? After he died, I received a collection of his drawings and there it was. The tree. 
He had doodled it at some point, probably sitting idly in his chair, watching the weather or EastEnders or listening to his cassette tapes of Cantonese opera. The tree. Perhaps it was inspired from something he was watching or listening to at the time. Perhaps it was a news report which showed a park or the countryside, or maybe something happened in EastEnders in the park in the middle of the square there. The tree. Or maybe it was based on a tree that he could see from outside from his chair. One of the overgrowing things from the neighbour's place. Or a tree which used to be there years ago, before the house got built in his place. Or it could have been from an advert on the side of the number 40 or number 40A at some point when one of them drove by. The tree. Was it from a memory that he held dear, from his childhood in the Hong Kong countryside, before the war split that image apart forever? Or from his first step onto mainland British soil, there must be some trees somewhere in Liverpool, or Manchester, or Bradford, or Leeds, or York, or Hartlepool, or Grimsby, or somewhere he had lived. Maybe there'd been a park that had held some special meaning to him, near to the first house he bought, or the first business he opened, or his wedding, or outside as he held one of his children for the first time, or even one of his grandchildren. The tree. Or could it have been a representation of the tree by the burial plot he had acquired? The one on the slight slope facing eastwards, and the bend of the small foresty path, at the south of the end of the cemetery. The same place where I stood that day, when I said goodbye, and then received his drawings. The Star Bar. This is just a genuinely nice place, and a staple of the stereotypically good, poor local diet. I mean, it's three pounds for a three-course meal. What isn't there to love? You get soup, you get something with potatoes or mac and cheese, you get jelly. Well, somewhere out beyond the faded bricks, the 38 speeds pass with a busload of folk, heading off or on to jobs they may love or hate, but at least they have them. And for that price, what else did you expect? I'm going to finish on uh, this one called Pizza Hut Strathbungle. Strathbungle was the first outside place that I uh, moved into many years ago. Pizza Hut Strathbungle. Despite the rain, despite the mess of public transport, Despite the history of religious tension, despite the wind, despite the low life expectancy, despite the links to British colonialism, despite the ever increasing rents, despite the hipsters and the students, Despite the drug and drink problems, despite the corrupt politicians, despite the crumbling tenements, despite the racism. Despite the smell of sewage and breweries. Despite the littering. Despite the vast economic differences between areas. Despite the motorway in the middle of it all. Despite the cold, cold winters. Despite the claustrophobic subway. Despite the munchy box meals for one. Despite the 10pm alcohol curfew. Despite the banker wankers. Despite the pollution. Despite the dodgy landlords. Despite the isolation. Despite the potholes. Despite the pigeons. Despite it all, I'm still so glad to be here. Sifan Glasgow, coming in April. I've been Sean Mike Young. Thank you very much. <laughs>